Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Here are your Linux, open source and privacy news for the end of June 2020. This month we have progress on easy anti-cheat on Linux, the release of Linux Mint 20, and Macs going ARM and probably locking Linux out of their hardware for a while. Let's dig into all of that right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. Linode makes it easy to give your creations their own personal space on the internet. Just about everyone needs a website these days, and if you've tested out simple drag and drop website providers, you know they tend to lack customization, lock your website onto their platform, and charge extra for basic features. Linode makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy enterprise grade WordPress, Drupal, or even static websites in just seconds using Linode's one click apps. These apps are the same tools that businesses trust to truly own your content, make websites that are ultra portable, and ensures you only pay for what you need. If you need something a little bit more powerful, Linode has now managed Kubernetes, and they are keeping their usual simple pricing model. There are no management fees like AWS and other cloud providers charge. They even bundle transfers, so you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, GCP and Azure. With the amount you save, if you're using Kubernetes, it really doesn't make sense to use anyone but Linode. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiment and get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. The link is in the description. June the 18th. The Linux Foundation with Harvard announced their free Libre and Open Source Software Contributors Survey. It's meant for contributors to open source projects only and is there to better understand the general profile of Floss contributors and see how they work and what time they invest in their projects. If you're developing free or open source applications or systems, you have until early August to take the survey. Wine 5.11 was released with a new Mono engine and the removal of the 32-bit PowerPC architecture, now considered obsolete. 57 bugs were also fixed, including for Age of Empires 2 HD, League of Legends, Supreme Commander, Battle.net or Grand Theft Auto 3. June the 22nd. The Wine team has made progress on easy anti-cheat. They can sorta of get it to work, as the team managed to run Dead by Daylight, which uses this anti-cheat tool, even though there are some performance issues. It's still an unofficial solution, and Epic might very well decide it's not the right way to make it work and ask the team to stop. They commented that they are working on bringing EAC on Linux, but that it's specifically hard, since their digital signature techniques need to take into account all the configurations and custom kernels as well. There is hope that most easy anti-cheat games will work in the future still. Apple held its WWDC conference and announced they would transition the Mac to ARM processors designed in-house, dubbed Apple Silicon for now. It seems these machines will make it a lot harder to install anything other than macOS on them. Bootcamp will be disabled, and as always with Apple, I'd expect them not to release any specific details about their CPUs, so writing drivers for Linux will probably be a pain. As a result, Macs of the future might be unusable with Linux, which is a shame. June the 23rd. Microsoft made its Microsoft Defender ATP tool generally available to Linux users. Well, to some big companies using Linux anyways. The tool allows companies to monitor for threats and vulnerabilities in their fleet of computers and servers, and can be installed on six main distros including Ubuntu, Red Hat, Oracle or CentOS. What trust people using Linux will put in a Microsoft product remains to be seen, but it's still nice to see this company opening up their products on more platforms. Google is adding some new privacy protecting measures. You can now set your data to auto-delete. All data related to web and application activity, as well as location history, will now be auto-deleted after 18 months. It's actually the default parameter, which is nice. One can't really help but think it's linked to the new privacy investigation going on against Google in the EU, but if it's yielding results, then I'd say it's working. June the 25th. System76 launched their new Oryx Pro with Core Boot. The laptop still uses a Clevo design with Intel's 10th gen processors and features a fully open source boot experience. The System76 open firmware is based on Core Boot and its source code is available on GitHub. The machine itself is pretty beefy with Nvidia GPUs, a Core i7 processor and up to 64GB of RAM starting at $1600. June the 26th. The Mesa drivers will now use the ACO compiler by default for AMD GPUs. This shader compiler was developed to improve performance in games and while you could already use it, it needed some manual intervention. Now the open source Mesa drivers will use it by default, which means that gamers using AMD GPUs on Linux should get a boost in terms of performance when they play games using Vulkan. June the 27th. Linux Mint 20, codenamed Uliana, was released with a bunch of improvements to the Cinnamon desktop. 
Based on Ubuntu20.04LTS, it ships with Warpinator, a new over-the-network file transfer app, a new NVIDIA Prime applet that lets you switch to your dedicated GPU when using a hybrid graphics laptop, as well as the ability to run any app using the NVIDIA GPU just by right-clicking it. Cinnamon 4.6 also supports setting the display's refresh rate, per monitor fractional scaling, and the Welcome app now allows users to pick a color scheme after the first boot. Mince 20 also removes SnapD entirely from the distro, going as far as preventing users to install it back through apps, although you can still reinstall it manually by downloading its packages. June the 29th. You want to use Ubuntu as a rolling release? Well, you sort of can now, using a tool called Rolling Rhino, made by Martin Wimpress, the Ubuntu desktop team lead. It basically will pull all packages from Devil, so you'll have a pretty unstable system, and it can't use PPAs, meta packages, or any graphical user interface, so it's mainly intended for development purposes and not as a desktop distro. Linus Torvalds gave a good interview at the virtual summit of the Linux Foundation. The creator of the Linux kernel explained a few interesting points. For example, he said that the latest kernel, 5.8, has a lot more stuff in it than previous versions, since the current pandemic didn't affect open source contributions too negatively. In some ways, he says, it even bolstered them, since people worked less or from home and had more time to work on their open source projects. He also points out that the kernel is lacking maintainers, not developers. It's an interesting conversation, you should go and listen to it. Retro music creators will be pleased to learn that Fami Studio, an open source cheap tune making software, is now available on Linux. Its goal is to be simple to use and have a limited but easy to handle feature set. It will let make you good old music like you could get in old NES games. Interestingly, the Linux version is still a .exe file that has to be run using Mono. And that's it for June. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, you can help support the channel on Patreon and get access to a monthly Patreon cast and vote on the next topics I'll cover on the channel. I'll leave a link to the Patreon page in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!